Welcome back to the Shrikecast. My name is Andrew Krauthammel, and today we are going to talk about SSL VPN. Uh, so, with the latest generation of firewalls, SonicWall, Cisco, Checkpoint, all of them are moving towards SSL VPN. And when I say that, I mean that for remote access. If uh, you want to connect from home in some fashion to your network, or connect on the road, or from a hotel, or something like that, you're going to need some sort of remote access. Back in the day, which is still a supported method, but is now being transitioned out, you would use the global VPN client, the GVC, for SonicWalls. Um, other vendors have their own clients. These clients got, uh, get installed as a piece of software, ties in with your network card, your drivers, uh, and it'll. there's client for various operating systems, uh, and it will communicate back to the sonic wall on port 500 UDP for standard IPsec like tunnel. The problem with GVC uh, and that's that method is at least um, for sonic wall's case, the client was kind of buggy. It was it was very large, seemed bloated, uh, and you had the problem of creating that port 500 IPsec tunnel. Uh, the reason that's a problem is because a lot of places end up blocking that. It's getting better over the years, uh, but some places like hotels or conference centers or something like that, they may block port 500 uh, or really anything besides standard web ports such as 80, 443. Uh, so trying to do a remote access connection with that and you know might end up failing. With the new generation sonic walls, you can see they don't even include a license for that. Uh, when you buy a new sonic wall what they give you a license for now is the replacement for that basically called SSL VPN uh, so on a TZ100 you get one license for free for an SSL VPN remote access connection um, the SSL VPN client I find is very nice it's lightweight it's available for almost every operating system Windows, Mac, Linux there's even one for iPhone and Android. Uh, it doesn't seem as bloated. It doesn't tie into your drivers as much. It's, it seems a lot nicer. With the old GVC, if you removed it incorrectly, you could end up destroying your, your drivers and your TCP IP stack. Uh, SSL VPN client is, is a lot nicer. It's, it's a much nicer application. So this is the method we're going to end up using when we want to connect uh, connect from on the road or remotely is this SSL VPN. Uh, the other benefit to SSL VPN, uh, besides uh, being a nicer client, is that it will connect over port 443. So instead of using that port 500, we're going to connect and tunnel over port 443. And if you're in a high security environment that only allows port 80 and port 443 for standard web access use, well now we can make a tunnel back to work back to our SonicWall here using that port 443 so we can get around that that lockdown and moreover uh, another great feature of SSL VPN uh, is that we can go to a web page which takes us to the SonicWall and it will automatically install the client for us uh, if you're using like ActiveX with Internet Explorer or there's a link there to download it and install it uh, and you can connect through a virtual portal right there on the SonicWall so we'll see that so in order to configure SSL VPN, you first have to enable access to the WAN port. So we're going to go to Network Interfaces, and you're going to go to your X1, your WAN port, or if you have other additional WAN ports, you're going to have to do this for each WAN port that you have configured that you want to use SSL VPN on. So we're going to configure our WAN port. In this example, in live demo, it's X1. And we have some options here at the bottom. Whoops. We have some options here at the bottom. Uh, management and user login. Management is used just for administrator access, what I'm using right now. This takes you into the administrative side of the interface. So that top line there, this is management, HTTP, HTTPS, ping. That's only for us as admins to get into the Sonic wall. The SSL VPN users are going to connect with the user login area here. So what we're going to want to do is check off, enable HTTPS for user login. 
that'll allow them to get to the uh, virtual portal on the sonic wall when they uh, when they try to access our WAN port. Uh, a thing that I like to do is disable the add rule to enable redirect because all that really does is open up port 80 on your sonic wall and then if they go to that it'll redirect them to the secure connection. If you create good bookmarks for people and you educate them properly that there's no need for that. Uh, all it does is add complexity and if you try to open port 80 at another time for a web server or something you have to go in and turn it off anyway. Uh, so I just leave it unchecked and, and just not use it. So we can go ahead and click OK. I'm going to cancel it here because I'm on live demo. And then we're going to go down to SSL VPN and server settings. On the server settings, we have uh, some links for LAN, WAN, DMZ, and the WLAN. This enables SSL VPN for that specific interface. They look like status lights, which they are, but they're also, when you click them, enable it for that, for that zone. So any interfaces that you have in these zones will have SSL VPN globally enabled. And then it's up to you to check off HTTPS under user login for what ports you want it to be available on within that zone. So what you'll do is you go ahead and click on WAN and this page will refresh and there will be a green little dot next to WAN. That means SSL VPN is turned on for your WAN. Again, if I do it here, it won't let me do it. Uh, below that we have the SSL VPN port. By default, SonicWall puts it at 4433. Um, usually I leave it like that on default unless they travel a lot to other countries where they're, it might be locked down like I mentioned in the beginning at which point we can simply change it to 443 and you would go back to the network area and, or sorry the administrative area and change your admin port so actually we'll do that here we'll go back to network sorry system administration and if you scroll down web management remember management is for us for the admins we can change that to 444 or whatever port you might want you could make that 4433 whatever whatever suits you and then we go ahead and accept that so then for us to get to this admin page it'll be on 444 and then we could go back to SSL VPN and make it 443 so that it's easy for people. They just go to HTTPS, your IP, or your DDNS name, whatever it might be, and it takes them right in there. They don't have to put a port number in. Again, this would be up here, uh, green. It should say that it's green for the WAN. And then you can also choose your encryption setting. So by default, uh, you know, it uses RC4, which is a, a stream cipher. I like to go in and change it to AES-256 because I like as much encryption as possible. Um, you can choose triple DES, you can choose RC4, you can leave it, whatever you want. I like to do AES because I like the additional security. Next up we're going to do portal settings. There we go. This is the settings for once you authenticate at the web page that shows up when you access the sonic wall. What does it show? You can change it to brand it for your company, whatever you want to make it. You can change the message and the HTML that's involved in that. Uh, I normally leave it alone unless people really want to change it to something. And you have some nice options down here to make your life easier for people make things work a little bit smoother. I like to enable both these options. Uh, I've only needed to use these, uh, use the certificate button uh, like once. It's it's there. It, it's nice to have it there in case you need it. It really doesn't hurt anything. Uh, and then I leave on the cache control as well. Depending on the client, I also have it launch net extender. Uh, unless they have a real use for the virtual office and creating bookmarks uh, and things like that, I usually just have it launch Net Extender, which is the SSL VPN client, uh, automatically. That way, they just go to the page, they log in, and boom, it pops up, and everyone's happy. They don't have to click anything. 
uh, if you want to give them options or have bookmarks to internal uh, internal servers uh, that are RDP based or something like that, you can create you can turn that off so that they can either choose to click the net extender button or choose a bookmark. So you'd go ahead and click accept and we're going to go down to client settings. So on client settings we are going to say where do we want these people to get an IP address from. Uh, right now with this VPN settings from SonicWall you have to choose a range of IPs. You can't have it doled out by your DHCP server settings. Uh, it's, it's a block of IPs that are designated. So when you do your IP scheme design, uh, designations, you're going to have to put a little block in there and uh, document that as to where your SSL VPN users are. So we have an option here between X1 or WAN or X0 or LAN. If we had other interfaces configured on the Sonic wall, they would show up as well. We could have users SSL VPN in and get an IP on a DMZ or something like that if we wanted. Normally, uh, for a real simple setup like this, it would be X0. That, that's your LAN. That's what you want to get into. Uh, and you don't have to deal with any fancy firewall settings uh, and, and dealing with access control that much. So here we're going to put in a block of IPs that just does not overlap with our DHCP server, hopefully. If you do, then you'll have problems. So that way, uh, in here I'm saying start at 100, go up to 110. Uh, we only have a license for one user, so I have nine extra IPs for expansion later on right there. Uh, and it will just give out the first IP, then if another concurrent user connects, it'll give out the second IP, and so on. It's pretty standard, pretty default there. We can copy over the DNS settings that are already put into our router. Uh, if you have a need for DNS domain, you can put that in here. Uh, unless you use RADIUS or LDAP or something like that to authenticate your users, local domain is fine. You're going to go in and create users uh, locally on the sonic wall most likely if you have a real simple setup local domain is, is that are those users and then if you have any win servers uh, if you use a win server in your um, in your domain setup or something like that you can enter those as well now below that we have a default session timeout often I bump this up because if you have people uh, sitting for 10 minutes they walk away from their desk at home and they go get something to eat come back and they're disconnected you get a lot of calls so I normally bump that up to you know something higher 60 120 it can go all the way up to 1440 so it really is up to you how long you want those sessions to hang out there uh, below that we have some new options in the newer firmware these weren't uh, these two weren't available in some of the even the recently older firmwares uh, so we can enable web management or SSL management over the SSL VPN. I like to turn these on for my use as, a, as an administrator. I might want to SSL VPN in and then manage the sonic wall at the same time. So if you have no use for that, you can leave it disabled. Uh, it really doesn't hurt because web management and SSH, they're going to be secure anyway if you set it up uh, nice and securely. So. Uh, if you leave it enabled for users to attempt, they're, they're going to hit an, a secure login prompt anyway. Uh, if you use a lot of file sharing for Windows computers, uh, you can turn on NetBIOS, make things easier for you. Uh, that'll rebroadcast NetBIOS, uh, which is a really old protocol, uh, which is real basic broadcast-based protocol from Microsoft from way back in the day. And with uh, these multiple subnets, because we're coming in from somewhere remote, coming into a, this LAN here, uh, NetBIOS doesn't really work with that, so the firewall has to be smart enough to see a NetBIOS packet rebroadcasted over the SSL VPN connection back to you. It's not perfect, doesn't work every time. NetBIOS is kind of kind of strange like that. It's it's buggy, it's not, it's not great, but it makes life easier. Uh, at least you tried, you could say. At least you tried. Um, 
enable client auto update. I always have this enabled. If you update the firmware of the Sonic Wall, it might have an update to the SSL VPN client in, uh, bundled in. And then if next time someone connects, it'll say, hey, you need to update. They click OK. It automatically updates the client for them, and there's no big deal. They don't have to go through any fancy prompts. It just does it. It's really nice. Uh, in order to conserve memory and just make things nicer for the, um, for the customers using it, I like to enable exit client after disconnect. So that way when they disconnect it, it closes the program. It closes NetExtender on their desktop. And that way it's not running all the time and if they have a slow computer it doesn't make it any slower. Uninstall client after exit. I always have that disabled because once it installs, just leave it be. There's no need to uninstall it. Just just leave it there. Just exit. That's all I want. Uh, create a client connection profile. I'm not going to go into all the details on that. You can read docs on it, uh, but it makes things easier. Uh, so we're going to enable that. And I usually leave communication between clients disabled because if Joe and Susie connect in from two different pl homes, I don't really want Joe and Susie communicating to each other unless they go through our network. Uh, and then it's up to you if you want to allow or prohibit people saving their username or password. You can choose that option here. So once you've made your selections, you can go ahead and click Accept. And then we're going to go off to Client Routes. For Client Routes, these are the networks that we are going to propagate to people when they connect with the SSL VPN NetExtender program. So when you go in and you connect with NetExtender, it is going to ask you, uh, it's, not, it's going to ask the SonicWall for a series of routes. What, what networks are on the SonicWall side that I'm going to put into my Windows or, or Linux or Mac routing table uh, so that when traffic tries to go to that network, go to that, that LAN, uh, it knows to send it out the SSL VPN connection. So what we do is we go to, uh, most of the time I leave tunnel all mode disabled. That will force all traffic to go over the SSL VPN, even general internet bound traffic. So unless you're in a really secure environment, usually people do split mode tunnels, which is this if you leave it disabled. Uh, so we're, we're going to leave tunnel all mode disabled and we're going to add a client route. We're going to select an address object. What I normally do is I go in and I choose LAN primary subnet. It's an automatically created object from the sonic wall that is your X0 uh, subnet. That's your primary subnet. So that's going to be 192.168.1.0. And when you do that, or, or whatever it might be, whatever you've selected it to be, when you do that, it will automatically populate it in here. Again, I'm on the live demo, so it won't show it but it'll pop in there and, and show as a route. You can go ahead and click Accept and move on. If you go to Virtual Office on yours, it'll give you a preview of the Virtual Office, what it looks like when people log in. Uh, and all we have to do now is create a user. So we've set up SSL VPN at that point. We've turned it on for the WAN. We've gone through all the settings for SSL VPN. We've enabled it for the WAN zone. All we have to do is go in and, and create a user. So we're going to go to Users, Local Users, and I can go in and add a user. So you can create your user, whatever their password might be. You can fill out whatever you want in here, whatever you end up, um, if you want to track people's email addresses, whatever. You're going to go to the Groups tab and we're going to select SSL VPN services. So now you're saying this user is allowed to use the SSL VPN that we've now configured. Additionally, we're going to go to VPN access and we're going to say if we now that they can connect in with the SSL VPN and get to that portal page, what networks are they allowed to get to once they connect? Here we're going to select LAN subnets, which is a object an address group that includes all of our LAN subnets. So this will include our X0 subnet and any others that we've created in the LAN. And additionally you can make bookmarks for certain uh, features in your network. You can create a bookmark that shows up on their portal page for an RDP connection to a server or something like that. 
uh, when you have the fancier sonic walls, like the Aventail devices, or S, uh, SRA devices, you can create uh, HTTP bookmarks, and you have a whole suite of options on, on different types of bookmarks you can make. On the very most basic sonic walls, you, you pretty much only have RDP and, and a few other options. Uh, most of the time you won't really need this for a basic setup. You're going to use NetExtender. So we'd go ahead and click OK and create the user. At that point, they're set up. That's, that's all you have to do. Uh, what you'll do is go to your sonic wall. You may get a certificate error uh, because it's a self-signed certificate and uh, it may not match. You can just say, OK, continue. Uh, again, when you go to this address, if you just did not change your port to 443 in that uh, configuration, if you left it as 4433, you're going to have to go to https colon slash slash your IP colon 4433 for it to get to this point. So at this point, we would then log in with uh, a user. and we are presented with our virtual office. Now the, the one I've just logged into is not the live demo so I have some bookmarks here that I've uh, that you can see. And in the middle here we've got Launch Net Extender. If we click Launch Net Extender while in Internet Explorer it will uh, pop up a, an ActiveX installer and, and try to put that in. Uh, it'll go through a series of prompts to allow it, and after the user access control pops up, and, and so on. It's a normal software install, but it makes it easier for people to click a button. You can also go ahead and just click here and download the executable and run it, and that will uh, install it as a normal program. Once it is installed, or you click it, um, it will automatically connect if you did the NetExtender button. If you clicked on the link and installed it manually, you'd have to go through and start NetExtender. There we go. So when if you did it, uh, went ahead and installed it as a normal application, and you launched NetExtender, uh, you'll be presented with a little window like this. It's very simple. Uh, whereas the old GVC software, if you used that, it was a very complex looking thing. In the NetExtender, all you have to do is type in your IP address, colon, whatever port you have it set to. It might be 4433 if you didn't change it, or uh, 443 if you uh, change it to that. And then simply enter the user authentication that you're going to use. Um, if it's Radius, it might be a Radius user. Or if we created that local user, uh, if you're doing local users like we just stepped through, you'd put in that local user here, uh, type in local domain and then simply click connect. And when you go ahead and connect, it will eventually pop here and say, all right, we are connected. Here's your server, here's some IP information, some traffic data, as well as what routes we received, um, so the, what client routes that were configured were sent to us, DNS information, and so on. And then when we're done with things, we can disconnect. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed it, please like it, subscribe to the channel, uh, visit andrewkrauthamel.com, my blog, for uh, additional training and IT information, and shriketools.com for managed security services for small and medium businesses. I will see you next week. Thank you.